everybody, it's Cinnamon Cooney, your art sharpen today. I'm going to show you how to paint this poppy in acrylic step by step. This is a full real time tutorial where I deeply explain every brush stroke, every color mix, every part of the process. And this is especially good if you're trying to learn how to paint and that type of back and forth instruction really allows you to fill in the blanks of your knowledge and build up a lot of art skills. To help me do that is my husband, John. Hello. When I'm sharing these techniques and tricks and tips with you and color mixes and everything about painting florals, he's gonna make sure that the camera is pointed at what I'm doing. And if I get too quiet, he's gonna ask me a question or perk me up a little bit. Yeah. Now, if you're here for the premiere, I am here and we have moderators here. Thank you, moderators, that are our whole purpose is to help. We're not here to like art gatekeep. We're here to help you find resources. So if you have a question, put that all in caps. We will try to answer that during the live show and make sure you can get to the resource or resource that you're looking for. Like if you check the description below, there's more information. So if you open that up, whether you're on mobile or on a desktop, wherever you're painting from, you'll see the material list and a link to my website. On my website are resources like the free traceable uh, mini books, links to our books. We have books on Amazon now and links to the art store, other videos, all kinds of things. So that's a good thing to check out while you're down there. Hit the thumbs up button. You know, actually, as soon as you, you don't even have to hit it up now. Like hit it up when you go, good job. The minute you think, good job, Cinnamon, hit that thumbs up button, go boom, good job. You know, so if I do a good job, let me know. Um, if you're here on the replay, definitely put your question down below. I am, um, uh, I teach online, but my whole purpose is teaching online. So if you have a question, ask it. I check my channel all the time on all my resources. And there's nothing for us to do today, but get together and paint this poppy, which is all about backlit petals, is all about sunlight, is all about light and petal techniques. So you're really going to love how deep we're going to get into the flower. Look how deep, like we got in, we got macro with this flower, didn't we? Yeah. So if you want to get macro with it, get your paints, you get your brushes, which you will see listed in, in the description below and the time steps, which are chapter or marked in the video. Come back and I'm going to show you how to paint this for real for yourself at home. Hey everybody, today's class begins with an 11 by 14 stretch canvas. I am using Art Alternatives Classic Cotton. You don't have to use that. I'm just letting you know what I'm using. And I really like this particular canvas. I have the wish or intention that you have the energy of love in your life. However you need that energy. I hope that comes to you. I have Mars Black, Quinacridone Magenta, Ultramarine Blue, Cad Red Medium, Cad Yellow Medium. I have this fun color, Lemon Hansa Yellow. You could use any yellow light or lemon yellow um, that you have in your bucket. If you don't have this yellow, it won't ruin the painting. It's just a nice step up. I have phthalo green, burnt sienna, and titanium white. How are you doing today, babe? Good. You ready to bring this lesson to these fantastic people who are painting along at home? I am ready. You are ready? I am ready. Are you sure? All right, throw up a step. Okay. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to kind of do is loosely with paint sketch out my poppy just to know where it is. Um, and the reason I'm doing this instead of just uh, acrylic ground, which is a solid color in the background, is because there's such a dramatic amount of light and lightness and yellows and reds and those can be transparent. So I'm like, ah, oh, you know what? Let's just go ahead and sort of sketch this in. So I'm going to take a little bit of my CAD red medium and my yellow and my cad yellow medium and I'm going to mix them together and I'm just going to sketch in sort of a a generalized sense of the size of the poppy now if you did not want to sketch in this fantastic poppy with me guess what you could do you could trace it trace it you could use the one of the free tra traceables that are on the website um, that you can download and print out and not have to draw this out but I like to sometimes just sort of Think about what I'm looking to do and sketch it in and see how that works, and um, which is great. Now, if you see this online, it means it worked well, <laughs> mm. right? Because I released it to you and I obviously was in some way happy with what I did. I'm just kind of loosely guesstimating the size and spacing of my petals for the overall sort of focus of this little poppy here. You know, I can sometimes make things smaller or bigger, depending on how I'm a feeling. Bring in a nice little low petal there. It's always fun to maybe bring in little low petals and then some little loose, fun petals, maybe that kind of 
play out. And this still gives me nice um, room to bring in light and backlight my poppy. And it being this large really allows it to be sort of the central focus of the whole piece, which is what I'm kind of wanting to do is I'm like telling a story of a backlit poppy, but I don't need it to be super perfect in. Now yours is perfect if you use the traceable because it's based on the final painting, which I haven't done yet because of how time works and <laughs> your time and my time and all those things, right? So, but you have the perfect one. I am in the beginning of my journey. So I don't know what the painting looks like at the end, except in how I envision it in my head. And sometimes those end results don't always go together. Now, I don't need to dry it or anything, but I am going to need to sip some coffee if you want to enjoy sipping your warm and delicious beverage, right? Your warm and tasty beverage, as Sheldon Cooper would say. Mm -hmm. You're certainly welcome to do that with me while John throws up another step. So in this step, I'm going to start laying in the background. I'll be painting over my wish. It's going to vanish because I'm using a very dark value color here. I'm going to be bringing in that first layer of light. And my tool that I have chosen to use to do this with my 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 nice magic wand brush wand here is my number 20 Raphael Artney Hog Bristle Brush. You could use a different brush. This is just a brush I like for this technique. If you have a different brush that's your favorite, guess what? That is okay. It is okay to have a different favorite brush. If you haven't found a favorite brush, I would recommend this brush. It's a good place to start. It's a good place to start. Now I'm going to take a little bit of my yellow and mix it into my red and get a very bright orange. Kind of bring up a little bit of my burnt sienna up to this. And we're going to start this idea. And you'll notice that the yellow is so transparent that I can still see my petals underneath it. Isn't that cool? But I'm going to start trying to imply this light that is coming in and is going to be backlighting my poppy. Maybe I'll get a little bit of white on here just to make it more interesting and light streaky. See how that white kind of adds a little streak of light to it. This is distant. The background is very, very bokeh, blurry kind of suggested. I'm going to rinse out my brush. We're going to call this a step and go on to the next one without stopping because I want this to be wet, but I didn't want you to get overwhelmed with the mixes. So I'm actually going to come here to my burnt sienna and my Mars black. I got the message that we're not going to stop. <laughs> Did you? I wasn't sure. I just wanted so, to make sure well, you knew where we were going. You said tasty beverage, and I was like, I want a tasty beverage. <laughs> You're like, we're stopping. I need a tasty beverage. It's not just you. It's me, too. And I'm just putting this first layer over here. I've got to get it quite dark, and I want to blend this here into that there. And so sometimes working these both when they're both wet will help me do that. Now, I have to wipe off my brush to make sure that I'm not just putting dark, dark paint back, back, back. And I'm going to come over here into my brown. And also, before my yellow is completely dry, start to work that in. So the reason I kind of gave it into two steps, right, is just so that you could sort of think and focus for a minute on your center light and then come back and do this part. Now, I just got my brush wet and I wiped it off with a towel and that's gonna let me kind of also come back in and blend. A little yellow and a little white here. And you can see that does allow me to start working that through. So when we're painting light, you know, sometimes there's some tricks that we can do to really help us get the result that we're going for, even on a dark canvas like this. And you can see just going back over allows me to kind of blend that in. Rinsing that out. Now I'm not gonna just wipe it off on a paper towel. I'm gonna wipe it in a uh, paint towel. I use paint towel to pull the extra moisture out of my brushes. And if you're having any trouble with the water and paint mixture on your brushes, I would recommend that you watch my video on how to tell if you have the right amount of water and paint on your brush. I'm hoping it will help everybody get a better sense of that. I'm just mixing Mars Black 
and burn sienna together and making a very dark color for this corner because right, it's quite dark over here everything's going to be in shadow I can leave just a hint of that leaf and come back into the petals because I can paint them a little over the dark it's the areas that are backlit on the flower that I'll want to have a nice light background to work with if I had done it all in an acrylic ground, what I would have done is um, painted the flower in white. But I like you to take you through paintings a couple of different ways because what can happen when you paint a lot is you get in a habit of a way of doing things. And then when you teach, it can make it seem like your preferential habit is the way instead of the truth, which is that there are a lot of ways. There's many ways of doing this. Right. And I always like uh, my students especially to come in and out of my classes feeling like there's a lot of different ways to solve art problems because it makes you guys more resilient as art artists just generally, knowing that you can get things done many, many, many different ways. really easy to get stuck in a pattern or a process and I'm not even being particularly hurried it, it might feel like this is hurried but this isn't particularly hurried I'm just kind of painting it all in and allowing the sound of the brush on the canvas to be relaxing to me it's a really cool sound it is. It's, I know I'm not sure if ASMR is real I'm going to be honest here. I'm going to tell you the thing. Don't cancel me over this. I'm not sure if ASMR is real. You have not experienced it. I, I, I have in that nails on a chalkboard is very unpleasant to me. You've experienced the anti-ASMR. But I watch a lot. Not Well, I don't know if it's anti isn't it? All? I don't know. <laughs> I What I'll say is I have watched the ASMR videos and um, <laughs> I just feel like I can't hear the video. I don't get the response. You but can say it, it skipped a generation. If it's real for you, I'm not trying to unvalidate the realness of your experience. I'm taking some yellow and some brown so that when I'm blending up through here, it feels, feels like these two are congruent. However, even though I, I maybe not be having that full ASMR experience, I do find some sounds are pleasant. Mm-hmm. Right? And some are not. Like peacocks, not a pleasant noise. That's not a pleasant bird call. <laughs> they have... Uh... Ah, it's not a pleasant <laughs> bird call, right? It's alarming. It sounds like, hey, help. Hey, help. You know? But some some calls, right, are pleasant. So I recognize that some sounds are pleasant and I enjoy that. I'm just adding yellow as I go up into that corner and then I'm coming back and adding more brown down through here. And I'm making sure that the canvas, even though I have layers of paint to come, I'm just kind of taking this moment to make sure that my canvas is really, really covered in its paint and that uh, it is covered all the way into the white of the canvas, which is not required. It's a preference. It is a preference that I have for sure. And I like it a lot. But it is not something that is required in art, believe it or not. The canvas can show through. Hmm. Lots of fine art artwork has the canvas show through. Now let's take a deep breath. All right. I am going to dry this. And what you guys are going to do while I'm drying it and you're drying it at home, whether this is a premiere or a live or a replay, right, doesn't matter, is you're going to hit the pause button. And you don't push play on me till your painting is dry. That way we're painting together, but you're not trying to keep up with me. My hair dryer, hair dryer and my painting space. And just through this whole thing, I want to say that to you. If you are feeling hurried or stressed or rushed, hit the pause button. Slow me down to half speed. This is your time. I am here for you literally on video just waiting. I'm captured like a genie in a bottle. <laughs> this video bottle just waiting for you to be here with you. Be at two in the morning or one in the afternoon, I'm here with you. So let's paint together at your speed and you set that through the video. Okay, let's dry though. We want this to be thoroughly dry before we continue on. I'll meet you back here in whatever your second is. So we're gonna continue sort of working out our background. A lot of this is out of focus. A lot of it is diffused. So the great part for us is we get to paint it in a very loose 
and uh, expressive way, I'm going to use a very fun tool called a D brush. You could use a filbert. Okay. So D brush is a new type of brush by Raphael. I'm going to use the texture number eight. And one side of it is flat and it's got a curve. And then when you turn it to the side, it's thick and it has a blendy area. And for this type of background, it's actually really useful. You don't have to use this brush. You could just use a filbert or round, uh, whatever brush that gives you a good loose thing. This is just what I'm using right now. I do like them. Um, and I know you guys are curious about them. That is why <laughs> they're not, they're not sponsored or anything. I just, I just like them. I'm going to take a little bit of my red and I might get some of my black and brown into it. And I'm going to go ahead and make little vertical lines. I'm using the edge toe of the brush. Maybe let's get a little burgundy going with our magenta being in there. These are just those first sort of like, ah, maybe something's afoot here, right? And get a little white in there. We're just saying, oh, there's some stuff here. If I'm coming out more into the light, I can make it a bit more orange. Because I go more into the yellow to talk about that. It's fun stuff. You know, and know that it's fun. Let's make it fun. Let's not be stressed about it. I'm going to take the red down here, add a little bit of magenta. And if I need to make it even deeper, guess what I can do? Add a little bit of ultramarine and you can see that deepens it up quite a bit and I'm making very rustic loose strokes and I am working the flat edge of the brush and then I can diffuse on the little D part of it. What you want here though is just a brush that lets you kind of play with things a bit. I can, even without really rinsing out, get into some green. And it's sort of interesting because you'll notice that that goes right over the brown. And fit into those areas. So this is a type of painting that we can do where we are expressive and we're loose. And we allow the nature of color to help us determine certain things. I go right back into my red, but I've got some green on there. So what is it going to do? It's going to take it in a bin to the brown a little bit. And I can make a very diffused and fun background. I can go a little bit of brown and black and maybe even green here. Kind of coming through here. And you can see that I'm just picking up paint and loosely filling it in. It's like filling in a puzzle piece. I like it quite a lot. Trying not to make patterns and repeat myself. And I'm trying to give this sense of something being down here, but not being heavy handed with what it specifically is by not creating such structural lines or such subjective lines, right? That um, the viewer has to really hang into each brush stroke. You want this to be more like jazz, a little more compositional, a little more fun. It helps to change directions. It helps to make sure that you've got um, nice depth where you know you're going to have light colors. There's, there's a lot here that you can do to keep this very regular. Let's call this a step. We don't need to dry, but we're going to continue on this side, changing it up a little bit because it's going to get much darker over here. Now I will maybe go into a little of my red and my magenta. And interestingly enough, I'll go ahead and get some black into that. And I'm going to do kind of the same thing here. I'll make some downward sort of strokes that maybe could be in flying. And I'll come back through. I just want to keep it light. And I'll go back into my dark. It's a very deep background. It's something you do often in oil paintings. And I, I think that we can lean into so much in in our acrylic paintings, right, is how we create these 
deep diffused backgrounds even without the blending properties of oils. Now I'm going to go a little bit more into my magenta and ultramarine blue. I'm going to come into here and sort of blend these in. Now it's almost like black, but you know, in value, it's almost like a chromatic black. But as I come through here, if I get some yellow into that and it grays out, look at what that does. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, it really, really is. And while I'm here, I'm going to get a little of my yellow into my purple. And I'm going to go ahead and add some of this a couple places. This is the yellow and the purple. So the purple gets grayed out a bit by the yellow, but it allows us to also talk about some little lit areas around our central focus. Now here I do want to rinse out my brush thoroughly and get all the colors out so I can keep painting bright. And I do want to dry, which is again, you at home, pausing me, even for the lab, even for premieres, even for replays until your canvas is done and you're ready to start again. I'll see you when you're ready to go. Okay, so now we're going to really set the center of the flower for real, real and the stem. I'm going to use a filbert this time. I am using the number four Isabe Isacryl filbert. So see how it's a rounded brush with a very skinny edge. I'm going to take my phthalo green and burn sienna together initially with just a smidge of my yellow. And I'm going to kind of start here very lightly. I don't really want to see that line until I get down here. And what I'm trying to do is sort of say, okay, so this is the stem going up into the flower. And this is where my center has to be based on the stem. Because we don't really see where the stem connects to the flower, do we? It's underneath. So giving ourselves a chance to sort of see this come in here, that's a very nice way to set that up. And I can always sort of, you know, if this isn't dry yet, kind of smidge it out. I don't need it to be completely smidged because it's quite dark down here, but I can do subtractive painting, which means I can remove a little paint from something. But now I know that this line and that line do kind of match up. And that can really help me. Now I'm gonna get a lot more yellow on here. And make sure that my stem has a yellow highlight and get a little more brown into it. And make sure that I have stem lines that are showing through this low area. Right, because what would be down here? Other plants, other flowers, other blooms, wouldn't they? So doing loose expressive little stem lines in a green gold which is made by adding that little more brown in there can really, really help us. I can bring in some zippered lines and that sort of implies perhaps a poppy type leaf. And get a little more yellow on there. And I can make sure that some of this has that light catching it. But it's loose. I'm not painting huge details, right? Because where do I want the details to be? You know, I, I want them to be focal here, not uh, focal in the diffused out of focus background. I'm going to just kind of highlight the top of that for just a second. Even maybe more highlighted. And when that's all in and that's good, I'm going to want to find a detail brush. And I'll go ahead and use one of my number one monogram liners. And I'm going to take my green gold over to my yellow. Get quite a light color. Add some white to it. Thin it with water. I could also use fluid acrylic, couldn't I? 
and I'm going to come on the far side of this and make sure that I've got a very bright highlight. I'm going to add the little hairs that you often see on a poppy, kind of a glow. Like the light of that has caught them. Maybe a couple places here kind of imply that too. Very lightly, right? Because I'm not trying to make details. I'm just trying to say, oh, hey, I think I maybe saw some of that there. Just sort of reminds me of something. Yeah. It's like a, it is very much like a memory in a dream. Your brain's the painter anyway, so everywhere I, th I feel like that I can maybe not. I'm going to go ahead and put like a very light center in here while I'm thinking about it. Up at the top, kind of like an ellipse. I know I've got lots to do there. Lots and lots and lots and lots to do. I'm going to get a little of my brown and black. And I'll go ahead and kind of define that in a little bit. And come back over to this nice light mix that I had here. little highlights here and they're just kind of thinking about those details that I've got to think about right get a little block it's okay if it has a bit of blue in it these are nice little bits that I can work in right now bring the little umbrella lines around Just doing some little detail work there. Let's get a little white into here. I might even add a little lemon yellow, like you do. Kind of maybe on that side with a little highlight. There you go. It doesn't need to be too, too extreme because there's such a strong contrast between the little floor. I don't know what they're called, little flits. They're like little flits. They're officially called flower parts. Flower parts. There's some cool black flower parts here that are all alien looking and that I really, really like to paint. So that's going to be really hang more of this here, but this gives me that starting place. Okay. And let's call this a step and I'll show you what we're going to do next. Seven. Fantastic. So I'm going to start painting in my poppy and let's let's begin down low where it's maybe a little bit darker. I'm going to get a little of my magenta and purple to start. And I'm using my number 8D, but I'm using it as a filbert because this is going to give me such a nice kind of edged for a petal. It's just a place to start. And I know I'm going to want to bring in a dark shadow because of the way that the petals would layer on each other. So that's why I get to go with a magenta. And if I want to come down into some red, I can then just come on the edge here. Pulling that in. I'm bringing that down. Grab some blue and pull it out. We'll just exaggerate that shadow. It's a lot of fun. 
And it's okay if it's like really sort of disappearing into a background, isn't it? It's dark down here. We're just shaping in that low part of that petal that's down there in that dark. I'm going to go ahead and get a little of my magenta and docks and I'm going to kind of bring this out here. Capturing where we would definitely have shadows really helps us pull all the areas where we have light. Now because I've got some magenta there, some blue, I'm going to add a little white. And get a little bit of my magenta into my cad red and add white to that. And I'm going to leave that there. I'm going to rinse out because so I know I'm going to want to get more into a peach, strange as that may sound. And that peach is going to really come from a cad red and a little magenta and some yellow, but I've got to kind of get that going again. There we go. So peach is really orange with white. If you think of um, a pink is red with white, peach is an orange with white. And this is just layer one. We're just getting some first colors in. And you can see that I can use the shape of the brush Pulling it in to create little floors. Wipe off a little bit on my brush and come in maybe with a little more red into the mix. Bring that in here. And I like to play with how much can I exaggerate this petal. Let's pull a little bit up here. So that we can kind of bring it up, raise it up, and then Blend that in and then come back, you know, with a little bit of the magenta purple kind of worked into the orange. It's fun how you can blend those things in. Okay. I definitely, definitely want to rinse out my brush. I want to dry everything. And I'm going to continue to come in and build like sort of this, these core set of structures. These aren't the finished petals. This isn't where we're going. We're just sort of painting in there the overall shape of the flower. And then through highlights and layering and everything, we're going to start pulling each individual petal out from the other. Be sure and dry everything because I don't want this petal to blend. I want to be able to layer and I'll show you what we're going to do when we come back. Now I'm going to want to put out some delicate little petals that are sort of detaching out here. And I want to kind of bring this up here and I may come back with backgrounds and etch in as I'm, you know, kind of working this out. I'm going to get back into my cad red, maybe a smidge of my cad yellow. And some white kind of gets me again into that peaching range. And I'm going to bring out a little straggler of a petal. Got some white. Little straggler of a petal pick up a little more of my red there. And it's just about capturing, you know, that little, that little, whoa, what are you doing over there shape? 
I might get a little more yellow going and come over here. That's pretty nice. It's a nice little nice little bit going. I can always get a little bit of my magenta in my red here. Maybe talk a bit about how that straggler has, even though it's in a warmer bunch of light, that there's a bit of a shadow along any of that, which will pull out a separate. I'm going to come up here. And I think I definitely want to pull in some background. A little more yellow. And again, at this stage, just getting that base in. If I go up too much on my green, which I just did, before it's dry, I can remove it back. So if ever you paint over something that you wanted, don't, don't stress about that. It's uh, very easy to put back. Go a little more into my yellow. And maybe now a little more into my yellow and white so we can really see this backlit of the ness of the petal. I'm getting some of my lemon yellow involved now. I'm coming back. Pulling that in. It's fun to do this this way because you can just build so much flower just with brush stroke and then as you go through, through light and color, differentiate the petals. So that's what we're doing. So you'll notice my brush strokes are curved and that helps create the shape, you know, depending on where it is in relationship to us. And sometimes petals can be curl, curved in or pushed out. We're just getting that all in now at this stage. And we'll individually think about them as we go. A little more into this peach. And I can always pull that out a little bit with a little bit of white. and then come forward. You can kind of see how that creates some different spaces, you know, with each one of these. Come back with a little blue. That lets that one curl out a little bit. It's looking pretty good. We have this sort of basic rough shape going on. Now there's some things that I want to do. I want to come back in with my background, which is my brown and my black. And I'll make sure that that's sort of chipped in. And I can even come back and reverse shape in that. And that's something to also think about is that you can 
come in and shape the petal, but if you want to pull things apart from each other, that's not that hard to do either. Get a little of my yellow and brown together. And make sure that that has a little bit of separation in it. And that's all you got to do there. It's just kind of, you get them laid in. And you can do that with a filbert or a D brush. Either one is fine. But it's just about getting that basic shape and all that. And then when we come back, I'm going to show you what you do next. But make sure everything is super dry. You got this. Don't worry. We're all good. So when I get the basic shape of flower down, I take a chalk tool and I try to find the bend and shape of my petals, um, how they're individually bent in and out, where the light hits them, how I'm going to understand them within the thing. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I talk about how this petal maybe has a bit of a shadow in here. And so I draw a line letting me know where that is. I know this one has the sort of wrinkle and highlight, and that means I'm going to want to give a glazing sort of shadow here and highlight that compared to the inside of this. I want this to curve very specifically out from everything else. I can come in and separate up maybe this petal. I pull curve down here. Where would you find this if you, you know, were wondering where is that at? Well, that's in the traceable, but how do I find that? I actually look at a couple of things to determine where I'm going to put these in. I look at where the curves and lines meet in the center of the flower. And I look at where I kind of thought I would want shadow, basically. So if you think of these as a bowl, you're kind of just shading a bowl. And you're at putting light through a glass bowl. It's really what you're doing is just a very crinkly, frilly bowl. So I know I want to curl this petal here and maybe I'm going to define the edges, you know, as we go. But let's imagine that it's a little bit bent over and twirled inside. Maybe the, the, the petals almost like folded in, which sometimes happens. You know, I can come along and easily find this edge right there. But I've got this nice little edge coming out here. And I can break these into several different little moments out here and use light to do that. And that starts to give me my overall floral shape. So that's what I'm looking for is where can I play with these edges? Where can I really do this? I know down towards the center, it's going to be a little bit darker. It'll be less dark here and darker here because the light's coming through here and we're going to be catching a lot more shadow down here. But I still need enough contrast to see my little flower parts that we discussed earlier. <laughs> So that's something that you want to do if you want to uh, really look at your traceable or if you really followed it closely, you're good. If you're painting along, try to look at your individual flower. Like if you just kind of went your own way from me, then look for those flower moments. See where they join. Try to imagine where is my light. That's how I get there. If you're not sure how to get there, don't worry. You'll develop that over time. Use the traceable as your anchor. Let's call this a step. When we come back, we're going to get into some round brushes. So I'm going to want to add some depth in here. I've got a round brush. This is a number 12 Textura round. It's just a nice chunky round with a good belly. And it's a heavy brush for, you know, uh, acrylic paint. I'm going to grab a little bit of my magenta and my cad red. And let's even start here and begin to sort of using the magenta glaze up a little bit of a shadow that's coming up. And by glazing, what I mean is the magenta tends to be fairly transparent. You know, you can see I'm blending it out there. I don't have any uh, allergies to any of my particular pigments. You should always check that you don't before you put your fingers in them. <laughs> because you can have some very serious allergies to some of it. And maybe a little bit even deeper with a little bit of magenta here. I've got a little magenta and purple there. I'm just kind of pulling this out. And I know that that's a bit of a shadow that I'm going to be exaggerating. I'm going to come underneath this and perhaps exaggerate a few of those little bits of crinkle and shadow coming out. Mid more magenta than blue on this.
You know, if you're having trouble with glaze, you can use a glazing medium to get it. I find that um, magenta is such a transparent color, it's pretty easy to get to. So I'm just sort of using this to kind of create that little staining where it's bigger, more into the blue. Right, that's where we're gonna go more into the blue. We're gonna use the blue to really talk about that extreme shadow, not black, but the blue. And I can wipe off my brush and just use that little feathering edge to kind of blend and glaze that out. It's like a blushing. You're definitely, definitely doing something here. And again, you want to leave this with enough of uh, contrast where your your little black little plant parts, the poppy parts, really, really can show through. Now, between this petal and the one underneath it, because it's sort of connected there, you can see I'm exaggerating that little shadow with the blue. Do I wish I had this flower in my garden? I certainly do. <laughs> I, think, I think it's a really pretty flower. I'm going to get a little more red kind of into here. Probably be coming back with a bit more orange in a minute, but I just want to exaggerate some of this down here at the center of the flower. Using some just red there, not blue, to kind of create maybe that petal differential. And I think even along here, I'm going to exaggerate some of that. That's pure cad, so I'm really probably not going to put my finger in that. Um, and that's just something to think about. I work with real cad pigment, so sometimes I'll put my finger in paint if there's not cad in there. Like, it's mostly magenta, but sometimes I won't. It doesn't come in through your skin according to what the paint manufacturers say in the science so far. Um, but I know that people can have allergies, so I just want you to think about that just in general when you're painting always. Like, how how you might have uh, different allergies to not generally dangerous paint ingredients because that's a true thing. Pigment and all of that, you can have an allergy to. So always be aware of that if you're doing the finger blend like I just did there. Okay, let's dry everything and we come back, we're gonna start putting in some exaggerated highlights and midtones. So I wanna continue to come in and maybe exaggerate and play with some highlights. I'm gonna take a little of my white out and my lemon yellow and I'm going to come to the edge of this petal. And find some little bits where I'm pulling in very, very light. Just needs to kind of show against the background. I can always get a little of my cad red in there to make some very crazy light oranges. Just playing with those little moments. So this is where sometimes lemon yellow gives me an interesting advantage since it is different than cad yellow. Playing with the two different yellows 
will allow me to maybe separate petals up from each other. Imply that something is in light differently than what's next to it. And that is kind of helpful sometimes. I'm just kind of pulling that out. Adding a little white and yellow as I'm coming in and blending that down. And if I need to darken this back here, I will also play with that. We're not above it. Why would you do that? Um, just to create an increased contrast. Oh, okay. Maybe a little more orange right here. I think even more into the yellow. I'm going to getting into the cad yellow here. So some of this will be a matter of really pushing, pushing, pushing. Get a little pop of yellow here and there. We're just trying to highlight bits of the bits of the petals. And then we can just go right back into cad red. And again, there's always that peach. That's another way to play with these color runs. Just in my little yellow brush here. More yellow. I don't want to take away completely that differential. I'm just going to dust right up into it. Paint the flowers. It's super fun. Getting a little more white into here. Uh, you know, if that's along the little crinkle there. And that's wonderful. See, we're just lighting along the crinkle. Wipe off on the paper towel sometimes. Little touches, little pops of light. A little pop there, a little curve here. If you're wanting to do this from poppies in your own garden, you do need to get photographs of them 
where there are backlits, you can see how that is impactful to the way the poppy uh, reflects and shows light through its very transparent waves. Oh yeah, that makes sense. Maybe a little white right there. See how that makes it feel like it's coming through? Yeah. A little right there. It's kind of can come behind that there. Pulling that along that little lip. A little more red and yellow. Kind of just also starts to pull that in. I'm going to get a little red and you can see as I start to pull red in it just those little lines just feel like they're little crepes or shadows in the flower don't they? And it's where the petals sort of wrinkles. I'm going to get a little yellow. This is this is work guys like if you're sitting here feeling like oh my gosh I'm really working you're right you are you're working. This is work. And we're going to, you know, be playing at it for a second. A little bit of my cad red and my quinacridone. It's such a nice um, way to start thinking about the shadows, isn't it? Because the shadows are just as important as I put a little little shade in here. Let's shade it. Are just as important. As where we put our highlights. I'm adding a little bit of white to that kind of pink purple and I'm coming here and so it does create kind of a highlight but it's also kind of like a highlight that isn't um, bright with sunlight going through it. Just playing with that there. Grabbing little bits of yellow. I like that. All right, let's call this a step because we did a lot of work here, my friends. That was a big step. It was a lot. We did a lot. Let's dry everything and then work on some lower petals. We're just building it up. We're getting the light in there. So let's continue on in our next step. I am going to add more color around the painting. I think I'm going to continue on with my big round. This is the number 12 texture round. And I'm just going to go on with my petals. Now, peach, we mentioned this earlier, is a mix of orange and white. So when I want to have a peach area, I've really got to kind of work from there. I'm adding a little bit of white into my uh, orange and I think I want it to be a little warmer which is just about adding a little more yellow in there 
And then I'm going to come along the toe and just find little highlights within this petal. Sometimes I will wipe off my brush on the paper just to make sure that I'm not carrying a lot of extra water. You can see I'm just hitting some highlights there, picking up maybe some of those things that would be a little more highlighted and brought forward. And if you'll remember, we've got that wonderful little shadow that we're talking about down here. And when I want to get into that, I'll interestingly go over to my purple mix over here with my peach. It's weird and it grays it, but it does give me that base color going into kind of like a deeper area of the painting. I Sometimes we kind of shy away from uh, using colors that might mute our painting yep. when actually they're like our friend. I, I continue to go in. I really love the color. The, the, I mean, the light play on this. It's just so how all the light shows on the flowers really nice. Well, they are a wonderful subject to study when it comes to light and how we see how we see it represented in plant life because so many of the structures in plants are pretty transparent, as you know, because you've been looking through th things, cells. John's been messing with uh, our son spider in the microscope a bunch lately, trying to help the kids kind of kill time as we work ourselves out. <laughs> 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 and, uh, and so he's been looking at a bunch of that but really what that's about is that a lot of times these structures just really allow a lot of light to come through and then they're also sort of reflective on top of everything I'm going to go a little more orange here and you can see I'm getting up into that white and that kind of does change that color and I try to bring it through so that this particular plant has so much you know structure and then I'll come in and I have it rinsed out. Have you noticed? And I'm going in into that purple and that creates this sort of grayed. Interesting little space, doesn't it? I can wipe off on the paper towel and if I want it to be a little more magenta, then I go a little more into that pink. And if I want it to be a little cooler and blue, I just hit more into the ultramarine and it's really just about sort of you know looking at your uh, painting like you'll have my reference step by step as we go through but like say you wanted to do this from your own flower in your own garden you would want to get that flower really well photographed with light going through it Take the techniques that you're learning from today and putting that into your own practice. Kind of blending that out a little bit. That's nice. That's blending quite well. That just got much more, um, I think, complicated and complex, this, this flower did. did. I'm going to come over here and get a lot more yellow into my orange. And let's get a lot more white involved. So you can see I'm just taking it into like the much warmer peaches. There's millions of peaches. Peaches for me. Sorry, I just couldn't help but do it. Don't they do kids songs now, Pisa? Uh, I, I, oh, I'm President sure. of the United States of America was banned when John and I were dating. Yeah, I'm fairly certain that. Uh... It's so weird to see like bands that were cool when you were coming up be like really cool like kids bands now. Yeah, I like think it even cooler. Like, I think they do, actually. Anybody who plays on Sesame Street just pretty much rules. Yeah, that's my dream gig. Like, I can't even imagine being anywhere cooler than Sesame Street. I mean, honestly, I think as a kid I wanted no, to move there. The Muppet Show. Uh, so no, that's I'm a Ses I mean, I love the Muppets, kinda, but honestly, Miss Piggy was a little alarming for me growing up. Sir, but, I mean, like, it's that was yeah, for a sketch comedy show. They're Genius. both, like, yeah. I mean, I would, I would, I would be equally... As you know, to to open like you play musically with animal. You <laughs> Who wouldn't want to play musically with animal? 
All right, let's call that a step where we can continue on down our path. <laughs> we all want to play with animal. Animal. You know, I wonder if anybody got it at the time. What a big deal that show really was. I'm just coming along here. I'm using Quinacridone Magenta and Cad Red Medium. And I'm going to come along the little edge of this and just kind of try to brighten this up. So it's still pretty deep in value, but we're picking up a little red. And then as I come here, I can get into a like brighter red. And so that little kind of um, chalk line, I'm just following along and making sure, and I'll wiggle my brush back and forth to kind of imply maybe some of the um, lines of the flower. I'm going to get a little purple and magenta together. And then blend wet into wet back into the petal. It's doing pretty good. I like these low petals. They're pretty, they're pretty spectacular. I go ahead and get quite a dark. Color going there. Maybe sort of trim in. I always like to sort of see where it's going to go. And I'm adding a little of my Quinn Magenta Cad Red mix in there. Let's maybe pick up some of this with some white. So it's just a little more. Kind of coming along there. I'm going to go back into my peaches. You know your peaches. Peaches, peaches, peaches. The peaches for me? Peaches for somebody. And that is your orange with a little bit of white. I'm kind of bringing it back. And you can see as we go and we just keep layering colors, it just starts to pull everything up a bit, doesn't it? Where I want it to be warmer, I'll get a little more yellow in it. And where I want it to be lighter, I'll add a little more white. And sometimes if I have to offload my paint, I'll go into my paper towel rather than rinsing out because I'm not wanting to add a lot more water. I'm working this wet into wet. And that's really lovely. It's amazing how a single color flower is so many colors. Yeah. I think that's maybe one of my favorite things about this is that how... There's millions of peaches. Yeah, there really is. And if you'd ever you know, wanted to get better at mixing the color peach. This project will get you there. And kind of wiggle along here and define out that little petal. Just some. Little cad red back into it. Grab a little just yellow from the lemon yellow and I'm going to adjust that on there. And I'll bring a little over here. Sometimes if I get a color and I'm like, you know, I think you need to be more than one place. This is when I'll kind of move it around. I'm going to go ahead and get some yellow and red. 
start working a brighter kind of lemony yellow orange over here. A little white. And then just come back and like really start loading the CAD red in. Come back and brush some cat right in. If I feel like my brush is too loaded with color, all I really got to do is come back, you know, and rinse it out and come back and get some pure color to work in. I like all these layers of peaches. Well, they really, they really let us see quite a lot of this, don't they? They like let us really see how the flower takes form and interacts with well gosh I think the whole garden all right we'll call that a step and honestly we're just going to keep continuing on there's just a bit of this to do you just kind of work around as you're as you're finding colors and saying all right this is this part of the flower this is that part of the flower I'm going to mix a lot more yellow into some red kind of orange this up a bit And sometimes I like to get into some yellow and white for these little tips up here. This is the lemon yellow and the white. Bring a little of it to that lower petal. I think it's always interesting as you carry things around. And you say, oh, hey, I think I think this here is maybe caught a little bit or, you know, work that out. I'm going to rinse out and I think I want to shade a little bit the underside of that petal. I'm going to go into more of a magenta, but I've got a little bit of blue on it. And this then can kind of make it actually a glaze where I'm darkening at some. And just very lightly glaze a shadow through. All right, so I'm going to come in here and add a little bit of kind of glow into the shadow. And that's just me going back with the orange while it's still wet. So that there's a bit of a glow a couple places in that. And I can even come back with shadow if I think I've overglowed. If you're like, man, I put too much glow. That's okay. You can come back. I'm going to add a little bit of kind of like maybe a little full back here on this petal. And then I can come in and get a little magenta on the back side and roll it up. I 
And that's always kind of a challenge to get into. I'm going to grab a little bit of peach that's light. And when I line the edge of the petals, you'll be able to really see that start to come in. And grab some yellow and blend that in. So I'm just always, you know, coming in and shaping and shading. I can come in with this and kind of with the shadow create the edge or the lip or the curl of that petal too. Always just looking for where I want to add a bit of color, add a bit of drama. Coming in with some yellow, pulling in drama. You gotta love the drama in a flower. That's really, you know, the best, funnest part of painting these is that they do have so much. You can see I get into the lemon yellow and back into the white and then just working the little bits there. Now, I want to dry everything and we're going to come back and add some more details and some more structure to our gorgeous bloom. Now, deep breath, these big flowers are big projects. I'm now going to use my golden fluid acrylic and I'm going to put it out. Let's make sure it's going to pour out. And I'm going to use this to do some lining along the edges of the leaves. Some of it will be white lining where the color will be white. Some of them I might tone with the colors that I've been using around the leaves. So it's just a lighter version of that. And I'm going to do that so that we get that sense of little bits of light just kind of white lining or reflecting, kind of like silver lining. Oh my goodness. I got a little bit of paint on my canvas because it was on my just rubbed it hand off. right here. Oh. And I just take water and I just rub it off. It's not too bad to actually remove. Happens every once in a while where you smudge in a mark and then you're like, uh-oh, got to check for those little marks. Yeah, we're good. I've done it multitudes of times sometimes on a painting where I'm like, goodness gracious, it's like no matter where I go, it's just there. Now this one is actually um, a curled petal, so it's and kind of folded and everything. So sometimes it's lining can be a little more ornate. I might even come in with a little bit of yellow and white. So it's not just white, white, but it's still in the lining. Right, so it's got that feel of it, but it's not the, like, as we come down, it changes from what it is. Get into some peach here. So that's another little trick is, you know, taking your lining and kind of toning it or tinting it with something else. I'm going to add some little lines going up it. I like doing this when um, the the image is very crepey. Right? Like these these little flowers tend to be a little bit crepey. Yeah. They're a little wrinkled and delicate and kind of lends itself to this expression. That 
that really catches the light on the edge of them. Yeah, it does. It just brings it sort of all together. Let's me catch little elements of the way the flower kind of turns and folds. It's just something I like to do. And I think it gives it sort of a finished feeling to it. This is something that's probably more about how I stylize my works. Than anything else, it just helps me put my little hand on it. Literally. <laughs> just come along this little edge up here. Okay, let's call that a step and we come back. Let's dry everything because we don't want to drag any of that lovely little delicate lining that we've just done anywhere. And I'll show you what we're going to do next. Now I'm going to want to sort of finish some of my center uh, of the poppy. So I'm going to get some of my burnt sienna and my phthalo green and, you know, shape some of this out a bit. If you remember, we get into the brown and yellow where it goes a little more green gold. Find that little color again. Sometimes when you go around and you're painting these, um, what will happen is that you will lose a little of what you tried to put in. And so you've got to come get it back and that's okay. So I'm just trying to get some of that detailing back. I can bring some of the green and brown and all of that over to the black. When I do it at the top, it's almost just a touch. It's not a big, long line. And the positioning of that is actually what helps position some of the wheel. Maybe bring a little bit of a kind of little highlighted shading there. Just a bit, you know, just to give it some zhuzh. Now I'm going to want to come in here and I might even do a little bit of my ultramarine blue and black and I'm using my, this is still that one liner, that number one liner. And because these lines are so fine and detailed, I may put my vision enhancers on and I'm going to go around and just kind of put in the little seed pods first and then think about how the little lines are going to be. Yeah, that makes sense. That way we get the feeling of them. I like to really kind of put that out there. This is really for us, for humans, a lot of what identifies a flower to us mentally will be about these little structures. Yeah. Right, because we'll be familiar with, oh, like poppies have a dark center. And just no matter what kind of poppy you have, there's a bit of a dark center. Sometimes it's these wonderful little structures. And sometimes it's, you know, maybe a little bit different than this. But it's essentially knowing that these are part of that lets us mentally make that journey to going from this painting to, oh, poppy. I am puppy. 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 I am puppy. I wonder if I'm going to get a content ID claim if I say that like a bunch of times. I am puppy. I want you guys to understand something. I spend hours, <laughs> hours teaching art for free, right? John here with me helping me 
all of that. And yet I will never be as successful as a girl that just said, I am Poppy for five minutes over and over again. This is the world in which we live. It is the way. It is the way. <laughs> as the Mandalorian would say, this is the way. And you can see I'm just trying to make sure that this is visually kind of a very strong... center so we're really enjoying it I'm liking that very much there we go we have a little poppy center we were so playful weren't we putting in our little poppy center we've got a nice little dark center that we can enjoy I like that very much. I am going to take maybe my magenta and purple together, and I'll go ahead and let my white get into it so I get this odd purple. It's not completely odd because it does exist in the painting, and it's not such a bright color that it's going to overtake this lower corner. And I'm going to go ahead and give this a little signature. That was not too terrible, was it? Just painting a little flower together. No, not at all. Just finding a little minute of peace in a world that is, well, gosh, not wanting to be peaceful right now, by choice, apparently. <laughs> it's apparently a thing that it's picked. And uh, I think that we all have a right to have a little peace in our lives. So these painting moments are extra special and extra important because they let us take that time, don't they? Now we come back, yeah. I'm going to tell you what you're going to do next. And I'll see you in just a second. All right, guys, so that was literally a second. <laughs> Just letting John get me big and place me over to the side takes a minute. Um, I really love this time I spent to you, to, with you this particular painting. I know it was a little bit kind of low key and chill, but I felt like we needed something a little lower key and chill. I think everything is just running at level 20 and uh, barreling along and, and, uh, being super intense lately, so having this time to sometimes just slow it down and take a breath and in and out and not necessarily taking the noise of the whole world lets us have a minute. I mean, it's a strange world. I just saw a news report about mystery pasta. Mystery. Like today, piles of mystery pasta. It made the local news. They had to report on it. There were piles of pasta along a waterway. Huh. Just pasta. Interesting. Just pasta. He caught the news. And I just thought, I want to live in a town where the lead story is piles of pasta. That's what I want now. <laughs> where the most they can come up with. That's, that's the excitement of the day. That, that's the excitement of the day. I wish that for you, that you live in a place that um, has pasta. I also learned during the painting of this that uh, my aunt passed away. So I kind of want to dedicate this to her. A little bit. Um, totally this is my okay, aunt yeah. on my dad's side, and uh, she was kind of a lovely woman. My my family on my dad's side they come from uh, ranchers in Wyoming, Danish ranchers in Wyoming, which is I have to tell you like another level of tough. Like like they would think those guys at Yellowstone <laughs> were just too soft <laughs> to right. be managed <laughs> with their not freeze to death. <laughs> <laughs> every winter like you didn't lose like five or six of your your herders because <laughs> we do in the wagons every year so i don't know i'm just kind of thinking about her and i hope wherever she is that this flower i don't know reaches through that veil and says hi i hope i hope you're okay and at peace now um i hope everyone in your life is good and that you're doing well what should you do next you should paint this with me and when you're done uh, you should share it with me, and you could do that on uh, Instagram, and you can do that on Facebook. If you don't want to just put it on Facebook, Facebook, because maybe for you it's face but For many people it is. I have a group, and we curate that group, and we allow no shenanigans in there. So it's a very safe place to come share painting and get supported. Um, we also have a Discord, uh, which I'm sure the uh, moderators have shared during the premiere. 
Um, if I, if you're watching this later and you're here all the way at the end, still listening to me and, and you had a question I didn't answer, oh, please put it in the comments below because I really try to check those all the time um, and make sure that I stay in touch with you guys. John also even is mm, paying yeah. attention. Um, you know, check out our cool things. Like we got books on Amazon now and I've got a school where there's full courses now. And those are things that you can do from the website. We have an art store. So maybe you saw something I painted with here today that you thought, I'd like one of those. I have those at my art store. And if they're not in stock, they'll be in stock any day now because we keep updating the stock. Um, and so that's available. So a lot of the stuff that you see here, you can buy there. Do you have to buy it? No. No, I don't even... I don't know. This video was sponsored by me and all my hard work and you and all your hard work. Yeah. So that's the thing that you can do. Um, if you just want to send, if you're not into being online on social media, like you're like Twitter is, is my nemesis. If you're over there and you want to share a painting with me, I check it only for you. You are the only reason I go to that dumpster fire and uh, you're the bright side of Twitter in my opinion. And I, I look at the hairless cats and I reshare your paintings. That's all I do over there anymore. That's it. Because if I leave my own account... I get angry I don't want to be angry um and there's also tiktok if you choose to be over on tiktok you can share there so that's really what you should do is finish and share and you know know that you did a good job maybe this is your first flower and this was uh hard or maybe this was your hundredth flower and you're super proud wherever you're at in that share right because you're having community and having people to talk to and knowing that you are not alone is such an important part of mental well-being and mental health and it's so easy now in a modern world for us to get really isolated into our bubbles isn't it just super easy to get very alone super easy so if you're feeling that man just come share a painting and we'll make you feel definitely definitely not alone <laughs> you're definitely with people so that, that's a really important part of that i will be coming back with more paintings if you haven't subscribed please do in fact if you're still here listening to me and you haven't subscribed like, what are you doing you should definitely want to subscribe so subscribe hit that like button share the painting don't immediately leave youtube go watch something else i guess that's good for me if you if you watch one of my videos and then you watch another thing uh, that's good apparently is what it what's the beastie wants right now i share that with you for any of your creators that you are supporting john i want to thank you for your time today thank you i enjoyed this moderators i want to thank you for your time and hard work today and you at home thank you for your time and your hard work be good to yourselves be good to each other and i want to see you at an easel really soon Bye bye <laughs>